Let's watch the film. Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Watch the Film. We have a jam-packed episode tonight and before we get into it, let's thank our sponsors at the AirRaidCertified.com for your Air Raid certification, VAR Systems for all your virtual reality needs, and the new and improved, and we're using it tonight and we'll get a little bit more into it, Tempo Video. And if you don't know, tonight we are giving away a Not Soft t-shirt signed by Hal Mummy himself from the incident where he broke his leg in the middle of the game and continued to call the plays because not soft air raid offense, baby. So here we go. Tonight, we are going to be watching the 1997 Kentucky at Alabama. Or excuse me, at Kentucky. And it's the last time they've ever beaten Alabama. And I have two co-hosts tonight, and I'm going to introduce the first one, the father of the air raid, the Godfather, Hal Mummy. Welcome to the show, Coach. Hey, thanks, thanks for doing this, AJ. And it's going to be a fun because of our other co-host tonight. He's and a pretty I, special guy in this whole deal. And I'm excited about this, and I'm going to introduce him. You're starting quarterback in this game, and for so many reasons, we've watched. I've watched film for Hal the last five, six years. And when we watch film, it's always well, he must have checked off to this because there's so much freedom in the offense. And tonight. With having the quarterback, we're actually going to know what he was checking off to. And we have none other than the former first-round draft pick, first pick overall, Tim Couch. Welcome to the show. I appreciate that. It's great to be with you guys and looking forward to watching this game. Haven't haven't seen it in about 20 years, so this will be yeah. a little blast from the past here. So looking forward to it. Oh, absolutely. Well, and as the moderator, I'm just going to step away from this because there's so much history and just so much knowledge here between you two. I just want y'all to take after it. And if you need me to rewind, fast forward, you just let me know. And as I said before, this was the last time uh, Kentucky has beat Alabama. And Coach, give us kind of the backstory going into this game. How long had it been since they had beaten previously to this point in 1997? Uh, tw- 75 years. 1922 wow. was the last time. And Tim, you'll remember this. The quarterback from the 1922 team was at the game. Oh, that's and right, yeah. yeah. He was, what, 99 years old. Mm-hmm. And they, they brought him out of the nursing home, and he got him in a box, and he got to watch. He had said he, before he passed away he wanted to do two things, and one of those things was he wanted to see Kentucky beat Alabama again. And uh, right. so we gave him the game ball after the game in the locker room right there. Tim did. Yeah. Uh, it was a special game. And, you know, I remember, even though we hadn't beaten them in 75 years, I remember that week of practice coaching. I remember we felt so confident that we had a great chance to win this game. And we just felt like we could go out and score points on them. We matched up well with them. And for whatever reason, our whole team was confident that uh, that we could go out and get it done. Yeah, they we had we had put up a lot of points on uh, Coach Spurrier and Bob Stoops the week before mm-hmm. against Florida. Right. And I think even though we didn't win that game, we – we we made a game out of it, which it hadn't been mm-hmm. for several years, right. and I think everybody drew a lot of confidence from that. I remember some of the defensive guys uh, telling me they thought we would win uh, through the week, mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I can remember having having our uh, our little catching drill there in Commonwealth Stadium before we went to the hotel, and you and I stand out there talking about it. Yeah, and, I remember that. And, uh, and I just thought it was like stars in their courses. We were going to win this game. Exactly. Yeah, I, I absolutely remember that conversation. Yeah. That's... Yeah, a lot of fun. Very much. And uh, it was it was kind of – I'll tell you a great backstory to the whole thing as we watch this. This is the first play right here. Right. We're running uh, 30 so – the, just the stretch play outside zone there to Anthony White, isn't that? Yeah. Yeah, that's Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. yeah. He was a heck of a player. Yeah. You know, and Anthony and Derek were the two perfect guys for our offense. They really were. Yeah. Because Derek had great toughness, great speed. Anthony wasn't didn't have great speed, but he had great elu- – he was very elusive. And He was. Yeah. And I remember, you know, Derek's a true freshman in this film. This is only like his fourth or fifth game for us. Right. 
And Anthony had been, uh, was out of the program when I got to Kentucky. We went and got him, brought him back. I think you and mm-hmm. some other guys told me we should do it. And we, we went and talked him into coming back. And, uh, boy, he turned out just to be a terrific they were perfect pass yes. catcher. Yeah, they, they yeah, were, could both catch the ball out of the backfield so well. They, they That's could the run thing. Yeah, Derek, uh, Anthony was great. He was almost like an extra wide receiver out there. And Derek, you know, he was such a physical runner in between the tackles. But like you said, Coach, he could catch the ball out of the backfield too and make things happen out in spaces. You'll see in this game, he makes some big plays in the pass game. Yeah, we're we're uh, there's a nice little draw play, a little thirty to Anthony right there. We I just remember early in the game, Alabama was ranked. I think they were 18th or 19th. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, top night. twenty. They were in the top twenty, um, and and had Sean Alexander at tailback, and you know they had some got some great players. Yeah, Freddie Kitchens was a quarterback for Alabama yeah. that game. He was uh, yeah. he was actually the head coach of the Browns, who yeah, uh, you know sure last year he only, only lasted a year, but you know that uh, I got to know got to see. Him. I, I was calling the Browns games last year actually. That's right. We got a chance yeah. to talk to Freddie about this game and relive yeah, it a little bit. And Tim, we got a question for you from the audience, and thank everybody who's listening in live, keeps it in these questions. You mentioned the Browns. Why do the Browns mm-hmm. keep drafting air raid quarterbacks, but yet won't open up their offense? That was a question from one of our live chat users. <laughs> it's, uh, that's a great question, actually. I, I don't know the answer to that. I wish I did. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's tough when you draft a guy who's, you know, a guy like me who in high school, I was in a, you know, a spread system in college, obviously, when Coach Mummy got there, I was throwing the ball all over the field. And then you get to, you know, the NFL and they want balance and they want more of a, you know, traditional passing game and, you know, seven step drop and hold the ball and, you know, trying to throw deep comebacks and, you know, deep in routes and those kind of things. And, and that's all good. And I can do those things. But if you don't have the personnel around you to do that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you're going to create sacks and turnovers and negative plays, and you're going to get your quarterback beat to death. And the beauty yeah. of the air raid is, you know, we got the ball out of our hands so quickly. And I didn't get sacked hardly at all when I was at Kentucky. And that's, you know, because I had a good offensive line and because of the system I was in, allowed me to get the ball out of my hand and into the playmaker's hands quickly. So I, I don't know why that, uh, you know, they don't do that. A lot of teams in the NFL are now starting to kind of go that route. But, uh, you know, the Browns haven't seemed to, to catch on to that yet. And you it's, mentioned uh, – it's you- it's slowly making its way into the NFL. Uh, it is. Yeah, here's a. This is a, just a six call with a hitch on the outside. Right, and you mentioned just getting it out quickly. I mean, you see it there, you take one step, and you get it out. Right, just a pre-snap read right there. I saw the the corner number two out there was on. You know, my go-to guy, Craig Yeast, and he probably had a ten-yard cushion. And you know, I think Coach said we had a go route called right here, and we just saw by you know the alignment of the DB, and I gave Craig a hand signal to run a hitch instead of the go. And I could just one step it and sling it out there and let Craig work in space. And which he always did a great job of. That's where, you know, when it, even like in the XFL this year, one of the problems I think in, in pro football is that when they do try to adapt to this type of offense, they don't know who to get. Right. They don't know what they're looking for. Uh, the personnel people, I mean. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so you end up with it. Uh, and I'm, I've seen several. The guy who's done the greatest job of that is the closest there is 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 Andy Reid, obviously. Yeah, Andy does an awesome job. But but he, Andy's an old BYU player. I mean, Andy's, mm-hmm. Andy's been yeah. the original uh, basis for our offense was three people: is Bill Walsh, Lavelle Edwards, and Mouse Davis. And right, and yeah, there's six eighteen. Uh, yeah, great, great little throw. We, we're calling that sixty two uh, stick these days. Uh, a lot of, you know, you see a lot of quick game right here early. I remember, Coach, uh, the first drive of the game, what we wanted was to get rid of the football quick because they had such a great, you know, pass rush, obviously, at Alabama. Every yeah. year they have guys that get after the quarterback. And our thing was, let's throw quick game, get it out of our hand quickly. Let's don't let them get sacks and negative plays on us. Let's throw screens and we'll make their defensive line turn and run side to side and tire them out so we have time in the pocket to throw. As you see here again, we're just nickel and diamond underneath. They're playing a, they're playing a deep zone on us. So we're just taking everything underneath right now just kind of taking what the defense gives us and making those guys run and, and kind of tiring them out as the, as the game goes on. Yeah, Keo Sanford was always great at those little tunnel screens. Well, he was. Yeah, he was great after the catch. Yeah. Here we got kind of a no-backs look. Uh, we That really started out to be open, but Anthony White just kind of moved himself into the slot right there, turned it in yeah. no-backs. Uh, this one doesn't work, but we're just throwing – 
Larry call the Larry call out there, Craig Yeast, and trying to do the same thing. Make those D linemen have to, even if even if you don't make any yards on the play, you're still making them run all the way over there. Right. And uh, and we're playing real fast right here. Yeah, you, know, you can't really see it from the TV copy here, but Oop. We there's, the, there's the hiccup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, well, I kind of got batted uh, up in the air right there. Not really your fault. And you you'll don't see know what exactly what happened. You can see on the replay, and to me this happens sometimes on cross. I think it was this Y cross, and you can see him coming over. It just looks like you didn't see that guy there because you could see where the grass oh, was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, he came just down. kind of surprised you. Um, yeah, he, yeah, I didn't see him at all. I was actually looking at the uh, at the corner and the safety there and didn't see yeah. the underneath guy fall off. I actually thought he came down into the line of scrimmage here and was going to run with the, the tight end or the back there coming across and – uh, with the back, actually, yeah, coming across, and he stayed in the zone, and just, I just threw it right to him. Terrible decision. I was this was my first year starting, so what was I, coach here, like this four was, or five games into my yeah, career? Yeah, I mean, we I were uh, yeah, yeah, we were probably four games. This is about the fourth or fifth game. Yes, yeah, so this is like my you know I started I think I started one game my freshman year, which I don't really count because I was running the option, which <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, which is pretty brutal. So this is yeah, this is my fourth or fifth real start in in you know major college football here. And to give a coaching point to coaches watching, because they saw that 95, and if you could have seen them, one thing Coach Mummy always says for your area certified guys that could have avoided that was never throw over linebackers on the cross. You always want to find that grass mm-hmm. to the left or right of them. Yeah, that's uh, – we do this routes on air drill is where we try to teach them. We put those dummies or cans out there and, and – uh, it, it's really, I think it's pretty pretty visual for quarterbacks and receivers. They, they eventually, just by repetition, they learn where the throwing lanes are. And we had a little, I tried to hit a little post out there, and old Lance Mickelson. Lance. I guess I just missed it there a little bit. He uh, barely, barely. The uh, Lance, Lance was another example of a guy where we just wanted to pick our players, you know, and we he was a JC mm-hmm. guy. When we got to Kentucky, everybody told me not to take him because he's not fast enough and all that kind of stuff. But all he did was just catch touchdown passes. <laughs> right, exactly. Go back to the, this. Uh, yeah, we're back to. Uh, Is this mesh, Coach? I think it's mesh. It looks and we like just yeah. hit the back out. We hit Anthony out of the backfield. Yeah, or that, that's, uh, that's Homer. Yeah. Oh, it's that's Homer, Homer out of the backfield, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. sure is. Yeah. 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 Homer was so good with the ball out in space and, you know, true freshman right here playing in a game like this against Alabama. And, uh, you know, we, I, I love dumping it off to, uh, you know, Anthony, if they played a soft zone on us like this and the coverage just kind of went away from me, I just yeah. would find the backs because, you know, Anthony and Derek both were, were so good at run after the catch. And, uh, you know, our receivers were good blocking down the field and giving those guys big plays. Yeah. They had, uh, they had a really unique ability to, to, check their blocking assignment and then get out and get in a get in your eyesight you know and that was you know it's it's hard to find those guys sometimes i mean you got to kind of know what you're looking for here we're in brown tight and we got a little z orbit motion and we're trying to hand the ball off to Derek, and uh not working <laughs> <laughs> there's leech he's telling there's us leech, it's not yeah. working yeah Right. She's going, that's not working. Don't call yeah, that let's don't call that. <laughs> yeah, scratch that. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll come back, do the same thing, it looks like. Uh-uh. No, play action. Have little play action. Yeah. Here. Also This is, uh, well, I should have thrown the ball away here. You know, like I said, uh, early in my career, not very disciplined. In this area of the field, you know, it's a one-two read down here. You yeah. got to know you're going to get pressure. You can't take a sack. I just should have. When they fell out off on the uh, on the back or underneath there, I should have just thrown it over his head and thrown it away and lived for another down. But tried to hold uh, on to it and make a play and took a big loss here. The uh, Like you said, it's only your fifth game. I think we end up yeah. getting a field goal out of this. You end up yeah, getting a, so. the field goal here, and I think it's going to play. So you'll end up getting the first score of the game, though. And I, and I kind of have clips in here, too, uh, not to give it away, just to kind of paint the picture of this whole game. But – that was the, the first scoring drive of the whole game. You get up three to nothing. And so this next drive will will continue on right there. As you see, you're seven for ten. Yeah, but it's now seven to three, I believe, because as I recall, that's the we yes. we kicked off 
they ran 80 yards on the first play. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it was Sean Alexander like, oh. running about as fast as you can run 80 yards. Yeah, yeah, I remember I thinking recall, after that. I think like, they blocked every Kentucky defender to the ground on that play. <laughs> yeah, probably so. Yeah, I remember was thinking, not, field goals aren't going to cut in this game. We're going to have to score no, touchdowns, especially when we get down on the red zone. Touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were really fast. Well, we got the ball back, so that was good. And we curl right here to Mickelson. I mean, to just touch on something you said, Tim, you talked about ball getting out fast. And, I mean, it's it's repeated – over and over how quick you can get the ball out uh in this game yeah, yeah. you know i think you know coach uh, coach mummy and coach leach and my quarterback coach chris hatcher they, they did a great job of preparing me as far as getting ready for you know pre-snap reads and i think you have to have a really good plan obviously things can change uh coverage can roll you know you think you see one thing and you get another thing sometimes after the snap but if you we get a clear picture of what's going on out there you should get rid of the football quickly and make a good pre-snap decision yeah, that was just a six call, and again, you just gave him the little hitch signal or the curl signal, mm-hmm. whatever it was. Here we yeah. got the 30 draw here off of it. We tried to keep – we ran a lot of draws in the game, trying to just keep their big D linemen welded in there. Right. Because they were, they were really wanting to pass rush on every play. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, but you can see you're I, checking off right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me see here what we got here. Yeah, I changed I it to a change it to yeah, a, change to a change hitch over there. Hitch and they, uh, they, yeah, they got, got right in my face. Yep. Yeah, they were up in there. They were pretty physical guys. There's some some good old names right there, Tim. <laughs> oh yeah, Jimmy yeah. Robinson, Kevin Coleman, yeah. all those guys had caught balls. Yeah, uh, caught a lot of balls over the two years you were the quarterback. Here is a great play. Be the play of the game, one of the plays of the game, anyway. Yeah, this was this was ninety five, and you just went to the backside here. Yeah, and kind I of. Don't, uh, I don't remember. It, you know, we used to let the backs give ball calls. I don't know if he gave you a ball call here or not, but it might have just been the rush took you to him. But, yeah, I think it was. I think I just kind of there was nothing happening over on the left side, and I, yeah. I think I was going to step up and try to scramble. And as I did, Derek just flashed into my vision and. Was able to get him the ball, and he made an unbelievable play, cutting it back across the grain and making a few people miss. And like once again, you know, I mentioned earlier about our receivers were great blockers down the field. You saw yeah. some great blocks on that one. Craig East getting a big one, Kevin Coleman getting a big block. So it's uh, you know, those guys are playmakers. Derek and Anthony coming out of the backfield were were, were awesome players. Just getting the ball in their hands out in space yeah. was always a, a good option for us. Here's a good picture of it right here. It, it right. Is, it's just the backside of '95, and then Derek right. takes it all the way across the field and up and and I to remember, me uh our manager ran ran step for step with homer down the sidelines at the end of this <laughs> i play. remember that well, yeah, what was, I can't think of his name right now but uh, I, I can't remember his name either but he was chasing oh, yeah. guys down the side yeah you always he, see the flash in the screen yeah, yeah flash, flat, there he is right there so <laughs> there he, he goes yeah he actually outruns homer to the end run. <laughs> But as I see that play, Coach, I just think of your core value, especially that you teach in the certification. You see it here of Homer, and it's get it to as many guys, throw short to as many guys as you can possible. And, yeah, that, that know how to score. Throw it to the ones that score. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Here we get one uh, out to uh, – Let him up for that one. Yeah, yeah we – Let him up the field a little too far. Yeah. Again, it's just trying to get get uh, get Got the ball out face. quick, get out and work the sidelines as much as we can. Make them make them stretch their defense after run. Now they now, little draw come back here. with a little draw play. That probably was your call most of the time. It was when they gave us the yeah. box that we liked. Uh, yeah, coach gave me so much freedom in the offense. Even here, just you know, like we said, my fourth or fifth start, whatever it was, he he trusted me, trusted my decision making that I would make the right call out there. And if I saw something and wanted to check it. Um, you know, I had all the freedom in the world to go ahead and do that, which was which was a great feeling for a quarterback. You felt like, you know, you were in total control of the game and you could go out there and your coach believed in you and uh, it made you believe in yourself. Well, you got to find a guy like you that knows how to believe in himself and knows how to be in trouble <laughs> control. You can't necessarily do that with everybody. For those of you all out there listening, sometimes you don't get the right guy back there, you know. But but if you got a, if you got somebody like Tim that uh, is not afraid to, to take the responsibility, boy, it can really devastate a defense. I don't know what happened there. I think it was a smash. I think it was smash, and we just missed it a little bit. I just missed that one, yeah. 
that's Marvin Love. Remember, we moved him to DB. Oh, geez. Yeah. He was that may be the worst throw I've ever made right now. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, you're going to throw that one left in. <laughs> it was a good move for him. He ended up playing being a corner in the NFL. Oh, man. We got blue set right here. Looks like we're false start. They're offsides. Yeah. False start. Yeah. But, you know, our, our guy Morris did a great job with our O line. And, and the one thing I've been, since I've been watching, going back watching these films, is we really did a great job vertical setting. If you watch our guys here, there's yeah, a little do. angle route to Anthony White. Mm -hmm. uh, and boy, he was just good coming out of the backfield. He was. And, you know, early, you said, like I talked about earlier, um, you know, early on in this game, we didn't get off to a, to a great start here, obviously. And they were, they were just playing such a deep zone on us. So everything is kind of underneath right now. We're just kind of having to take what they give us because they were so worried about the outside threat with our fast wide receivers with Keo Sanford and Craig East and those guys of, of just yeah. meeting deep. They were going to keep everything underneath. And as a quarterback, I think, you know, you just got to take that. You got to be disciplined. And sometimes it's hard because you want to get the ball down the field. But if they're playing that deep zone like that, just take those underneath routes and, you know, let, let your receivers and running backs try to break one for you. Here we got a blitz look, so you got a chance to take a shot and force another right. overthrow and – yeah, I had him. I should have just uh, flattened it, flattened it out a little. Flattened bit. it a little bit, but again, that's that's game reps right there. You know, I mean, you right. just hadn't had a lot of them at this point. Yeah, but, and, and they uh, really hadn't blitzed us at all up until that point. So I no, think they they, they kind of get they they won they won that down. You know. Yeah, and then we we come back here. And I think this is ninety three. Yeah, it is. Uh, we got the curl out of X and the wheel out of H and Z oh, on yeah. post. Is that a flip yeah. set? We had Lance Mickelson in the slot there. Well, and I think that's too what's happened and what we've seen in this first half. What you did back then, Coach, is you know a lot of teams and coaches, all the pass isn't working, so let's dot the I with two tights, two backs, and we, we can't throw. But instead, you, you just kept to it. You kept to the philosophy, and if you go that route, you can't score points. And you continuing to throw the balls was going to open up this game to where you come back and win it. Yeah, and and I'm, you know we had some pretty good runs on this thing, and there's mm -hmm. Tim showing his niftiness right there. He got a good <laughs> one there. The uh, but we 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 kept them honest with a run. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah. and it was kind of like this year, AJ in Dallas at the XFL. We had two running backs, kind of like these two, and we. You know, we had some games where we threw for mm. over 300, but we also ran for 20, 150s. So, I just think, you know, when you get all the pieces in place, and we we had them in place right here, this group you're seeing, this is really, the like Tim was saying, it's the beginnings of it. The next year when we went to the Outback Bowl and, and uh, had a great season, we had nearly all these guys back. And so, by yeah. that time, they had played, you know, played a whole season together. Had a had a spring where we knew who was going to play where and all. You know, I I uh, going into this first season, I just remember when we got to Kentucky. We had to move a lot of a lot of receivers around because the guys we thought were going to be the starters after spring practice all flunked out of school. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, but but you know. As it turned out to be a blessing, these guys oh, knew what nice. they were doing. There's naked play right there, old Let's Kevin Coleman. And, Coleman. and you can see uh, we're now in the third quarter. You got down there. Uh, you're doing the minute drill. Got the field goal in with less than five seconds in. So it's 17-13 you're trailing. But you're on the move here with a nice boot, as you were saying, the old playboy. Yeah, Kevin was great at that play. And he, Kevin was a fun mm -hmm. guy to coach. He was just fun to be around. Yeah, he was. Kevin was actually my roommate that year. Yeah, at, uh, at UK. So we had a, we had a nice connection. We, you know, we you, obviously your roommate. You talk a lot about the offense and about plays and how you want to how you want him to run routes and set things up. And Kevin was very good. He wasn't the fastest guy, but he had uh, had really good routes and really good hands. Didn't you take him to Eastern Kentucky one time grouse hunting or something? Yeah, I took him back there a few times, and that that was pretty interesting. He, uh, how did that he, work out? Was a little culture a shock hunter? for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He told me he fell off the mount, and then he yeah. looked at you and said, "I'm tired of doing this, Daniel Burns." <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Kevin was a fun guy. He was fun. He was. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. 
Yeah. Here we got a little open set underneath the center. You know, that's one thing we don't do enough of anymore, I think, is Tim, you had you had a lot of plays that you just wanted to be under the center on. I remember ninety four was yeah. one. Yeah, I did. I, was one of them. Six eighteen was one. Um I, I some some plays I really like to be under center because I just wanted the ball in my hand right now. So I could you know, I didn't have to take my eyes off the defense. You know, in the gun, you have to kind of look down to see the ball, catch it, uh, kind of reset. And I just wanted it, you know, snap it to me right now so I can keep my eyes up on the defense and I knew I could get rid of the ball quick. And, you know, certain runs I wanted to be under center as well. And you know, here's one I got pressure in my face and kind of had to throw this one falling back a little bit. I was stepping into the throw, and right when I did, the defender got in my face and had to kind of fall back and didn't get much on it, but was able to put it in a good location for the receiver yeah. to go down and get it. Yeah, made it a great catch there, a great, great throw under the conditions we uh yeah i i think we need to have a little more of that back in the game what's happened is at the point i came to kentucky most people had most quarterbacks you recruited had been under the center you know mm -hmm. out of high school now i'm not sure you were because y'all had kind of an unusual high school offense yeah, we were in the gun a lot yeah. in high school, but you know, I remember coach not not necessarily this year, but the next year, my junior year, you put me under center quite a bit because of the NFL wanted to yeah. see me operate under center, and yeah. it was kind of one of those things that you were kind of helping me out to show them I could operate under center and do that kind of and run a traditional offense. So we we did we kind of mixed it up that way as well. Yeah, that's true. But I, I tell you what, it helped our. So I, but my point is, I the next job I want to do it a little more, and I'm mm -hmm. just gonna like like. You know, the guys we had in the XFL this year, none of them had ever taken any snaps under the center, except for uh, Landry Jones had it at the Steelers. So. Right. But no, nobody so, wanted to do it. <laughs> they they yeah. couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> exactly. You know? So th and, this play here, I remember, um, yeah. you know, just by, by pre-snap alignment, you can see here they're in a man coverage, and I knew that Anthony had their linebacker outflanked. I knew we right. could get a step on into the outside. So if I put the throw – this was all about location on the throw. It's not a hard throw, but you have to be deadly accurate with this to keep him on the run because if you throw it on his back shoulder and slow him up a little bit, he gets tackled on the five-yard line. If you right. put it out in front of him where he can just catch it and doesn't have to break stride, then you got a chance to outrun him to the pylon. And So I knew this was I knew this was going to be a touchdown if I put it in a great location, and uh, that's why I got rid of the ball so quickly. I knew exactly where I was going and just kind of had to get it out there and, 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 like I said, be accurate with the ball and, and let Anthony make the play. And, then, and, and this is this is a this is a class. I'm sorry, AJ, but it's a classic shoot route. Anthony does runs a great route. He has a great angle. And see, this is what I love about it is just your gamer awareness right here, Tim. Because this is I can see right here. It's blue flip ninety two. Guy in co motions, mm -hmm. your pitch and catch guy. But that's where your progression's supposed to be. But you're so aware of grass, yeah. and I think that this so many coaches can't get over that part where okay if he can get there he can go to read five if he can see it there it, it, they mm -hmm. make it too technical and that's what i just love right here how you're just able to find it totally skip your progression and know you got the one-on-one -on -one right there to outflank the guy yeah exactly yeah. Jay. i think you know like we talked about with the pre-snap read you just see where they're aligned and you see you know we we always talked about you know coach mummy and coach leach and hatcher they always talked about attack the grass we're going to attack the grass and i just saw a bunch of space out there and looked inside and it was obvious who was covering anthony and he was lined up on the on an inside shade on our running back so i knew we had a step on him uh just from alignment purposes only so i knew that's where i was going with the ball now it's the simplest way we talk about this a lot in that in that air raid certified uh course it's the simplest way to find big plays if you just find the open grab. Just that's all you got to do. Just, I mean, it's it almost sounds moronic to say, but it's just, it's simple. But they're it, not it, there, so you throw do. it there. <laughs> yeah, where they're not. Throw it where they're not. You know? <laughs> and uh, and and so we have all these ways to attack it. We, we can get somebody there faster than they can. That's right. exactly what happened on that touchdown. There's a nice little draw play again right there. Uh, we had we had a couple of ways to run the draw like we still. We had one back, two back draws, lead draws. There was lots of draws. The uh, what happened the, there, right? this game just went back and forth. We had kind of a bad series here. I um, this thing was just a battle all the way to the all the way to the overtime. I believe this was the first overtime game in the SEC, wasn't it, Tim? 
I'm not sure. I think it was. So I might check me out on that, but I, I believe it was. Because the overtime rule had only been in uh, in Division One for a year. I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember it being very new, yeah. We had it. We were at D2 Valdosta State. We had it. Uh, we had it there before. We had played several. Boy, somebody got clocked right there. Uh, uh, this, yeah, is remi- um, this is reminiscent. <laughs> this is reminiscent of you this year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I got something there, right? She, she's not know, soft. She, she may be out cold. Yeah, she's soft. She's very soft. Soft, soft. Obviously soft. Yeah. Yeah, Madalino's on the case. Yeah, Madalino's on the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I did not remember that. I'm not even sure I even saw it during the game. But yeah, I didn't notice that either. The uh, Homer was a hard guy to you don't you didn't want to get hit by Derek Homer. No, Homer was a great player, tough runner. The one thing about Derek Homer, and for you guys listening out there, you coaching your running backs in this offense. The one thing Derek, the reason Derek Homer could start as every game at Kentucky for four years was on pass protection, he understood that you had to get the first putt. And mm-hmm. so usually they're blocking linebackers that are blitzing. So Derek, when a linebacker would come at him, he was going to stick his chin, his helmet, right under that guy's chin. Oh, absolutely. And, and try and get as big a hit on him as he could the first time he blitzed. Well, this yeah. is an absolutely fabulous play here. We went naked with a corner. Right? Yeah. Can you go back to the uh, beginning of that, AJ? And I can oh, – yeah. uh, Talk you through my so so right right here on the snap I saw both guys walk up on the end of the line of scrimmage so I knew I had a blitz and it was going to be kind of a zero coverage uh, just straight man across the board no safety help uh, so I knew the guy off the edge was going to be free and that's why you see me just come up out of this fake quick and get off I threw it off my back foot kind of like a you know jump pass because I knew I wasn't going to have time to turn the corner and get my shoulder square to the throw and and I knew the corner on the outside was no threat to fall underneath this corner route because the, his alignment looking dead at my receiver on the outside um, he, he's not going to bail out of that technique so it's, and my guys got leverage on their guy he, their guy's playing an inside shade I got a corner route so I know if I just get this ball up in the air and throw it to the back pylon that Kevin can run underneath it and I it was really about just getting the ball up before their uh, the edge rusher could get to me, and that's, that's why you see me just kind of fall back and get rid yeah. of him. That was a great play. It was a great and, quick read, too. And you've done this twice with pressure in your face, and that's something we always tell the quarterbacks versus the blitz, and you don't have enough time to throw this this flag route or smash route like you want it to. Just lift mm-hmm. the ball with air, and that way when right. he turns back and look, see, he don't even know you've thrown it, but he can look up. No. And it's just fabulous yeah. play. You've done that twice now against pressure in your face. That's that's turned into about 30, 40 yards and a touchdown now. Yeah, yeah you know, I remember this is a this is a drill coach that we would work a lot in practice where, uh, you know, we would come off that bootleg and Hatcher would have somebody right in our face and you got to – it's kind of that surprise where, you, you know, you think you're going to be out there on the corner all alone and it's going to be nice and – you know, you know, pretty picture where you, you can square your shoulders and throw it, but sometimes they, they get upfield on you, they don't buy the fake, and they're right right in your chest as soon as you turn around, and, you know, what are you going to do? you got, you got to get rid of the ball, kind of that get big drill. You know, you remember we used to do that, Coach? Mm-hmm. Yeah, get uh, big. Yeah, they we get, still call yeah, it get, get big. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they get right in your face, and, you know, that was a little deeper throw. Than, you know, normally you got to tie it in like on a little flat route. You kind of get big and get it over the defensive end, but, you know, in that particular play I had to get big and throw a corner route, so – a little tougher, but uh, you know we, we had practiced that, so it's kind of like a, just a, you know second instinct for me. Nice little draw play there by Homer. Again, we're keeping him modest with a draw, getting him trying to play as fast as we can right here. Keep him keep him kind of in a base defense it, as much as we could. And to paint the picture, you're down uh, thirty one to twenty seven, and now you're now in the fourth quarter. And so this is a drive that could potentially set up to, to take the lead. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's actually 37. I think maybe we could kick a field goal. I can't remember. I, I know it's, it's about uh, to come up, but I'll, I'll let it uh, <laughs> surprise yeah, okay. you. Okay. Let let everybody be surprised. Or I think it's 30 31 28, but we'll we'll see. 31 20. Okay. All right. The uh Little mesh route right there, not going anywhere. Greg. Yeah. Yeah, they did a good job just covered everything up here. Yeah, they did. They just uh they they were very 
Like, I like all. They, they were just very athletic. There's that naked again. Oh, I remember this play. Kevin dropped it. it. <laughs> Kevin dropped it. Yeah, and I want to reach out and choke him right there on the side. Yeah. Because he was so open. I mean, he wide was, open. He was going to run for like 15 yards and he <laughs> caught it. He just looked like he had two left hands or something. And see, so that right there was on third down, and you can see you're you're deciding even though you're down. So you have to you have to kick, punt it away. So they drive down, kick a field goal. You're still down at this point until this happens, which was mm-hmm. so, so it was thirty one to twenty seven, and you score yeah, okay. here, and, and more uh, Stewart. You 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 go and, up, and this is going to lead into that score right there into the big overtime drive, which is next up right here is this game as what we may, may think is the first ever overtime in the SEC. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, yeah, that was old Darren blocked that ball and Anwar picked it up on the run and made a made a great play out of it. We're twenty nine of forty four for three night three touchdown. And uh Yeah, yeah I think right. I panicked a little bit here. I should have stayed in the pocket. The pocket was good. Um you know, if you want to go back to that, let me see here. This is one of those. Uh, I think I just tried to. I'd predetermined something here, and it wasn't there, and I kind yeah. of panicked. I should have stayed in the pocket, just kind of stepped up, but see how I bail out right there and kind of put myself into pressure. The the end was blocked by Comstock over there, and I kind of rolled out and put Comstock in a bad situation. If I would have just kind of hung in the yeah. pocket there and found somebody underneath, we probably would have got a completion. But yeah, kind of bail out on that. I have a pretty good pocket there. Yeah, just pocket's kind of step up. Yeah. Yeah, I think we had smash going on over there. It looks like. So here it is, second play, overtime, and they you'd already stopped them. So a score here is going to win the game. Yeah, we right. you know we took they we won the toss and we made them go first and we forced a fumble, mm-hmm. and then we had. Uh, we had these two plays, and then we had it. We used a timeout, and we had the famous Craig Yeast speech to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had many of those, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throw me the ball. Now. Throw me the ball. What are y'all doing? Yeah. What are you waiting on? <laughs> you know. But in this case, it's uh, pretty famous in Kentucky history because he. Yeah, he called the perfect play, and and yeah, there we are. See, he's yeah. Craig is saying in no uncertain terms that we should throw the ball to him, <laughs> and and uh, I think we eventually do it here. Maybe it's the next play. Yeah, I think there's. Was this yeah, third remember. down here? Yeah, I think second. so. It was. A, there was no, a time. Second, out. Yeah, this is second down. It may be the next. I think play. I dump it off here. Just kind yeah, of get I think rid so. Of it. And then we come back on like third and long, and yeah, yeah. yeah it's, yeah, we had just about screwed up overtime, our yeah. our series, our first series, and then yeah, we called timeout, and there's you, and here comes Craig, or here comes Homer, but Craig steps in here in a minute and tells us what to do, and uh, yeah. so a good deal. He I always knew Craig was doing a great job at Kentucky Wesley. So, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's he's going to be a good coach. Yeah, he's uh, had a good mind. He he saw stuff, and. Uh, and the yeah, the rest is history, as they say. Yeah, that's it. And he yeah. told us what the coverage is going to be in this, nine, uh, this formation. Yeah, yeah. ninety-three. There it is. He said, "If you'll just throw me the curl out, he can't tie." <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously, we're we're just thinking, trying to get a first down right here. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm just kind of hanging in there. Uh, see the curl on the back side here, and Craig is able to catch it and slip a tackle, and he's in the end zone and. I just remember as quickly as this play happened, I looked up and all of Commonwealth Stadium was down on the field with us, tearing down the goalposts and just uh, just a crazy scene, unbelievable. Kind of kind of one of those moments you live for to you know as a college quarterback, like you live for that moment to throw a touchdown pass in overtime to beat Alabama. Um, it, was, it was just an unbelievable, unbelievable feeling. There, yeah, you can see them starting to rush the field right there, and it seemed like as Craig scored, 
and maybe this is just in my mind, but there was like this this moment of just a second of silence, and everybody in the stadium was processing that we won. You know? yeah. And then it just turned into panda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get they all get down on the field here in a second. They they get both goals. Oh, yeah. down, I think. They tore down both goalposts, marched them all the way to downtown Lexington, which is <laughs> probably about five or six miles, and and then all the way back. And the reason I know that is because my friends from Alabama had their uh, – some guys I played with in college were always North Alabama fans and Alabama fans. And they had, I had gotten them tickets for this game, and they came – and the next morning, I met them for breakfast, and they said, "Yeah, we saw the little remnants of the goalpost come <laughs> to the <laughs> tailgating area about about uh, three or four in the morning, <laughs> and they'd That's cut them weird. all up. They'd cut little pieces of them off all the way, all the way." But uh, why? What a what a what a fun night! And really, kind of started that, that. This was probably the game, AJ, that started putting air, air raid on the map. We, uh, Alabama folks, they don't like to lose, but once you beat them doing something unusual like we did, they want what we're doing. All right. We we start having visits from Alabama high just almost on a weekly basis after the season. Absolutely, and I think one of the biggest we, – we watched the LSU game before and just those two games right there, biggest – Big time wins, and arguably this one's the biggest wins. Do you have any takeaways that happened after this game that you remember uh, for the people listening in and the coaches? Uh, I'm sorry, any what? Any takeaways from stories that happened after this game of, of beating Alabama, you or Tim? Um, you know, I got one. Well, you go ahead, though, if you got one. Uh, you know, not, not really, I can't remember any stories after, I just remember the feeling that gave us that, you know, this, that we were for real, you know, coach, you remember when we first started trying to run this offense yeah. in 97 here, uh, you know, everyone <laughs> said, you know, coach was coming from about Asta state and they were saying, you, you can't run that kind of offense in major college football in the sec. It's just not going to work. Uh, the sec was traditional, you know, running conference, you know, people, you know, it's all about running the football and, you know, the, the power and, you know, just offensive line, defensive line, just winning games at the line of scrimmage. And coach came in and said, we're going to throw it, you know, 40, 50 times a game. And people thought he was crazy. He said you couldn't do it. And this game kind of solidified us as as the air raid offense that we could go in and we could beat teams like Alabama. We could beat LSU. We were beating our rival in Louisville. You know, we were we were doing those kind of things. And so but this game really put us on the map and that uh, let everyone know that we were for real and uh, that, we're, that we were going to be a contender in, in the SEC. I'll tell you, I'll follow up on that. I got a good story with that because it's about the great Paul Feinbaum. And and when I got to Kentucky that spring, to follow up on what Tim's saying, all during the summer, Feinbaum was ripping C.M. Newton for hiring. Mm -hmm. And he was ripping me as somebody who didn't understand football. And being from a D2 school, there was no way any of was going to see. And so we had to get put up with this for like probably six months. And then after this game, I'll never forget Monday, I'm sitting in the coach's locker room and Tony Neely walks in and he goes, Hey, I got a media request for you. And, uh, all, all summer long, all I had heard was I didn't know anything about football. I didn't know anything about football in the SEC. And I said, well, who is it? And he goes, well, Paul Feinbaum should be on the show. And so I looked at Tony. I said, here, get your pad out. I want to make sure you get this right. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, okay. I said, call him back and tell him when he learns something about football, I'll be happy to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, so I love it. about 20 years later, Coach Newton used to have this charity golf turn in Tuscaloosa, and I would go every year to play in it. Me and Tubby Smith and Rick Patib, all the all the from there and uh <laughs> i'll walk in like the, the get into the end of the uh the cocktail party the night before the tournament i walk in first guy i see is paul fine <laughs> <laughs> i went over and shook his hand he goes yeah you told me i didn't know anything about football 
<laughs> oh, it's funny. Yeah, it was. You, you yeah. know, I remember, Coach. Uh, you know, bef- before uh, before you were hired at Kentucky, you know, when I was there. <laughs> Bill Curry was the head coach. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was running the option, and you know, it was just a, a horrible year for me. So I, I was actually going to transfer. Um, you know, I was I had originally committed to Tennessee uh, before I kind of changed plans and went to Kentucky. And I said, you know, my dad really wanted me to go to Kentucky. And I said, I'll give it one year at Kentucky. If it doesn't go well, I, I'm going to leave and go to Tennessee where I wanted to play in the first place. Right. And, um, you know, so after that freshman year, I told my dad, I told my brother, I'd already been in contact with Coach Fulmer and Coach, uh, Coach Cutcliffe down at Tennessee. I said, I'm transferring at the end of the year. I'm, I'm, I'm this, this will be it. And then uh, at the end of the year, uh, well, about halfway through the year, Coach Curry got fired and, and CM came to me and he said, uh, he called me in his office and he said, if you'll just go through this process with me, I'll get a coach that's suited for your talents. If you'll just, you know, hang in and just at least go through the process, meet the new coach and those kind of things. And I remember I said, I said, I'll go through the process. Yeah, I'll see who, see who we bring in or whatever. And he brought in, he, he hired Coach Mummy. And, you know, obviously I'd never heard of Coach Mummy at this point. And, uh, you know, I, I, he was Valdosta State. I'd never even really heard of Valdosta State, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> and wow. I, I, I remember I walked into Hal's office, didn't know anything about him. Didn't know anything about the offense. And, uh, you know, there was still kind of a quarterback controversy at Kentucky with me and Billy Jack Haskins at this point uh, my freshman year. And Billy Jack was uh, going to be a senior. You know, I was a freshman uh, and uh, those, those kind of things. So, But I walked into Hal's office for the first meeting. And the first words he ever said to me was, he goes, you're the starting quarterback and we're going to throw it 50 times a game. And I, I remember at that point I said, hell, I'm staying. This is my man right here. <laughs> I, I didn't need to hear anything else. I'll tell you what, and, and Tim, you don't even remember this because you had so many letters, and I, you, there's no way you could remember Valdosta State sending you a letter. But the year before you went to – your before your senior year in high school, okay, we had Chris Hatcher at Valdosta State, and he won the Harlan Hill Trophy and played for the national championship and all that. He threw for almost 12,000 yards and – and so Leach comes in my office after the season, and he goes, this is who we need to get to come down here and be our next quarterback. And we can promise him to start for four years. We'll throw it 50 or 60 times a game, just <laughs> like he's been doing in high school. Right. And so he hands me an article, a Sports Illustrated article on you. Right. The, the best quarterback in the nation, right? And I'm sitting here reading this, and I'm going, yeah, we're, we're going to get this guy. He's probably been offered by every school in America. You know? And so I told Leach, I said, yeah, get after it. Why don't you send him a letter? <laughs> but, but as it turned out. Leach, he was going to get it too, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, when we were at I. Wesley and several years before, we had actually recruited on Billy Jack. Oh, uh, yeah. Kind of, because, you know, Billy Jack wasn't a big guy. He was coming. He was yeah, a guy was, you would you'd kind of look at him. He ended up going to Kentucky, but you'd kind of look at him and kind of project him as being a small college guy. Side. Right. And and so we had actually tried to talk to him when he was like a junior in high school. Mm-hmm. And, and we knew his dad. His dad was a coach. Yeah. And so when Coach Newton came to sit in my living room in Valdosta, Georgia, for the first interview, part of the interview, he got to the end, and he said uh, – well, we're going to have, we've got these two quarterbacks, and one of them's really popular. He's from Western Kentucky, and he's going to be a senior, you know, really, you know, plays hard. You know, everybody loves him. We got this other guy, he's a freshman, and, and he's a phenom, and everybody in Eastern Kentucky loves him. So we got kind of this controversy. How would you handle that? And I looked at him, I said, Well, I know who they are. Who they are. I said, I actually tried to recruit both of them. We weren't, couldn't get them, but I mean, we, you know, I know who they are. And he goes, oh, okay. So, yeah, you got Billy Jack and you got Tim. And uh, he says, uh, well, how would you handle that? I said, well, are they, are they both taking care of business? I mean, they go to class and they're good people. And He goes, oh, yeah, they're both great people. I said, well, and I would sit Billy Jack down to move to H because he'd be a great slot receiver for us and Tim Couch would be a starting quarterback. Right. And I'm the only guy they interviewed. And he interviewed like a dozen guys. I'm the only guy that he interviewed that said that. Mm-hmm. Everybody else said, well, we'll go through the spring contest and all that kind of stuff. Right. 
but I wasn't into wasting time. <laughs> I already knew what the outcome was. So, <laughs> so since, Billy Jack would have made a great age. <laughs> he would have, yeah. Because yeah, he, he could really run. Um, yeah. But anyway, Billy Jack transferred, and uh, the other couple of guys we had there, they transferred. So Tim went through that first spring, AJ, at Kentucky, and he was the only quarterback we had. He took every rep. Well, I know what that means. <laughs> yeah. You had a bunch of quarterback coaches and equipment managers doing routes on Yeah, air. we had. Yeah, we were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Got, yeah. a, got a lot better arm strength from it, but hey, <laughs> been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With Coach. So, but, man, this, this was awesome. Everyone's in here just fired up to be able just to listen to this and hear some of these coaching points and, and looking back at it. And can't thank you all enough for coming on the show and, and reliving one, of, if not the biggest win in Kentucky history. Well, I appreciate you having me on, AJ. This has been a lot of yeah. fun and always good to get to – reconnect with coach and you know go back and watch these films we it was it was such a special time and you know i I didn't realize it at the time how big of an influence that that this offense was going to have over college football and now it's spreading into pro football but it's really all over the country now and you know we were just doing it trying to you know we were just having fun and trying to win games and you know now it's kind of spread all throughout the country and you know uh coach and his coaching tree is just kind of spread out and everyone's having so much success with the offense and it, it was such a special thing to be a part of and i was glad i was you know, coaches, uh, kind of guy to get it started for him. No, it was great. And, uh, how are those couch kids coming along? <laughs> well, they're doing great. Uh, I got a 14 year old and 11 year old and, you know, both into sports and, you know, 14 year olds, uh, he, he's in eighth grade. He's already six, three and a half big kid. Yeah. Pretty, no, pretty did you tell me he's a defensive player, huh? Yeah. He, he played quarterback up until, uh, this past year. And he, he just kind of wanted to switch over. He just kind of, Felt too much pressure playing quarterback, and, and uh, <laughs> so he, yeah, so he just decided he wanted to play defense, and he actually plays uh, he plays defensive end, and is doing a great job, and and really loves it, and just kind of can relax and go play football, and not have to worry about you know expectations or anything like that by playing quarterback. So he's he's happy and enjoying it. So that's all that matters to me. Well, you know, college coaches listening out there, y'all ought to send a scholarship papers over there. And- <laughs> yeah, I would if I, if I had a college job <laughs> right now. Oh, no, absolutely. Got, yeah. But anyway, AJ, thanks for letting us be on. And that it really was fun to talk uh, to him and, and uh, relive that. That was a, really a tremendous night. No, absolutely. And thank you, coaches. And uh, we'll have to do it again. And thank you for coming yeah, on. Yeah, we will. All right. Absolutely. Anytime, yeah. guys. Yeah. Thank happy y'all. Easter to everybody out there. Yeah, happy Easter. Yeah. Thank you guys. Y'all, y'all have a good evening. Bye bye. All right, coaches. So, what you've been waiting for after I play this commercial, we're going to have the giveaway that you must be in the chat, uh, the chat of the Not Soft t shirt. So, when we come back, we will have the giveaway. Retweet. You got one more minute. This is Let's Watch the Film. Hi gang, I'm Hal Mummy. Welcome to Air Raid Certified. And guys, we are back, and you might be asking, what is tempo, okay? So if you've noticed tonight, when we were watching the film, I was efficiently taking film off my hard drive and playing it through this new video player. And this is the beta. It's not yet released. It's going to release in a few weeks. This is tempo. And notice I got fast forward, slow motion, rewind. If you wanted to watch 
a game right now off your terabyte of hard drives of film that you have, you can't. What are you using? Windows Media Player, you got to skip around the time bar. Same thing with VLC, it's all skipping. This is going to be a media player that actually is football uh, incentive. You can sit here and mark it up and start putting in your plays, and it'll mark up your MP4 files, and then you can put in the overlays. This is meant for co every coach needs this. And it's like, okay, what? Well, this is like the big time programs have stuff like this. No, this is going to run off your terabytes, off your computer. It's not cloud based, and it's only going to be around, and it could change a little bit, but not much. Nine dollars a month, and you can have a sufficient media player anywhere you are. You can play your videos off your Dropbox. This is going to be the real deal, and you could sit there and take two films and create an intercut with it. So this is a preview of what it's like. To me, I already get fired up just having a fast forward and rewind. I, I never can get that stuff anywhere. But here it is. This is coming out. Go to TempoVideo.com. Releases in a few weeks. Be ready for that. It's going to change the game for watching films for coaches.